Hi everybody, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com with another full case break of 2022 Panini Prism Baseball. Pick your team number five from jazbeescasebreaks.com. A very big thanks from Fresh Case as well, obviously, 12-box case. Very big thanks to this group for making it happen. Chad getting like six or seven teams. Uh, getting six or seven teams to... Uh, Knock that out. Some, a lot of last spot mojos right here. If someone offered me a million dollars to bend Rex Geist for life, would I do it? Yes. Absolutely. And I'd then, uh, then I'd give you a third of it, and you'd be happy too. So no big deal. Twelve boxes. Good luck. We are looking for three autographs per box, although some boxes I feel like we've seen four autographs. A lot of parallels. We're looking for a Carolina Blue hot box. We're looking for some of the top rookies. Julio Rodriguez, Wander Franco, Bobby Wood Jr., Spencer Torkel, some guys like that. Maybe some one of ones. Maybe some train whistles in here. Exactly. See? Easy, Rex. Easy. Good luck, everybody. Ooh, Tiger Stripe popping early and the Carolina Blue Hot Box popping early. Pop it like it's hot. Uh, remember, the red and blue parallels, not numbered. Everything ships, though. All cards ship. Chris Sale, Tiger. Tiger. Tiger uppercut. That goes to Zachary and the Red Sox. There you go, Zach. We got O'Neill Cruz to 199 for the Pirates. It's a nice one for David and the Buckos. Our first autograph, Stephen Riddings, rookie auto for the Yankees. Now, just in the interest of time, because we've got another long break coming up after this, we're going to breeze through these a little bit slightly more quickly than we usually do. But don't worry, we will uh, all card ships. So as long as you see it, we'll ship it. It'll get to the right place. Our sorting and shipping team do an excellent job on all these breaks. Like the snakeskin parallels, 20 out of 50 For uh, the Guardians, David with the Guardians, and of course all of these will be top loaded before they get shipped and uh, sorted and shipped out. Shohei Otani signed a year extension. Did everyone see that? I feel like that happened a few days ago. Signed an extra year. There's Lars Newtbar. So maybe he's not getting traded in the offseason. Putting the newt in newt bar, the nutrition in newt bar. That's going to go to Zach with the delicious newt bar.
all those Julio Rodriguez's will go to uh, Seattle. That'll be for Patrick. Jared Walsh, red wave to 99. That'll be for the Halos. It's going to go to Patrick. All these Wander Francos will go to Chad Wright and the Rays. Let's look for some parallels, Chad. That's what we want to see. Maybe even some ink. Back here is the Boz, Shane Boz, 21 out of 25, Carolina Blue. Rookie autograph for Chad Wright and the Rays. All right, first box in the books. Now, Gilo's Royals looks like they're cleaning house. Um, they are cleaning house. The, uh, the, the owners let go of the uh, GM about a month or so ago, right, Gabe? And then uh, they let go of their manager today and somebody else. So the Royals are in, I mean, we're gonna have plenty of time to talk about the playoff team. But what about the Royals? What, 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 are, their, uh, what are their next steps? Not yet, Oliver, we are, we are just one box in. I'm ripping box two right now. We just started. Now Gilo's asking, a pitching coach also let go. Gilo's asking, uh, what are the who are the like the free agent managers? Who's on the market? You know who's on the market, Gilo? Mike Sosha. Now Mike Sosha was tapped was tapped to coach the futures. The I, was it the AL or NL? Was was the manager, was the head coach, was the boss, was the manager of uh, a futures team. I feel like he's the perfect guy to take, like, you know, a young team to the next level. It's Cal Raleigh, rookie auto for the Mariners. That's going to go to Patrick. I think that could be, I mean, I'm sure there's, there'll be, you know, tons of possibilities, tons of options. You never know who's going to, who else is going to get fired or who's going to make themselves available. Or maybe there's like a, you know, a pitching or hitting coach somewhere around the league in the mix that suddenly becomes available or something like that. Ken Griffey Jr., Lime Green to 125. I just thought, I was like, where's my, speaking of the Royals, here's Bobby Wood Jr., base card for Ariano. But Mike Sosha. Coach the Angels to a World Series. I think is a pretty pretty smart pretty smart coach, former catcher. Austin Warren, Blue Wave autograph. Speaking of the Angels, that goes to Patrick Cox. 9 out of 50. Still involved in baseball, obviously, with the Futures game and everything, so it looks like he's still interested in being in that world. It's Julio Rodriguez. Hopefully we'll find some parallels of Julio. So I, I, that might not be... I mean, that, that, that name should at least be part of the mix. There, you should at least get an inter interview, I feel like. So Reed Detmers, another angel for Patrick. That's going to be... Uh, for the Halos and Patrick, the threw a no-hitter earlier this year. Bobby Valentine. I don't know. I think the I think the Bobby Valentine day is probably over. Jacob DeGrom to 149.
That's right, yeah. Lucas is an Angels guy. There's Spencer Strider. This is probably your NL Rookie of the Year right here. This is going to go to Brandon Richards and the Braves. There you go, Brandon. Much better day today in the breaks. Why do you think Mike Sosha? Maybe it's a Mike Sosha choice. I always thought that Mike Sosha would be would be back in coaching pretty soon. Mike Ditka, maybe, says no. He's pretty surprised that Mike Ditka started coaching some baseball. We might have to force the Kansas City Royals owners to sell the team if they hire Mike Ditka. You'd be like, yeah, something's wrong there. I see. So I. I thought, I thought that he left the door open, Lucas. I didn't realize he was pretty, that he made it pretty clear that he's retiring. Okay. Bruce Bochy. What about Bruce Bochy, Giro? Does that move the needle for you? What about um, what about Joe Madden? Joe Madden may do things a little differently, but you know. The, if the Royals are okay with that and they kind of let let him give him a, a bit of a leash you know to do something a little differently if Kansas City's into that then that might be something there's Jackson Kowar to 50 unless Kansas City's a little too too traditional maybe 14 out of 50 Jackson Kowar Oh, Bulk Showalter did get a team again, Diego. He got the he got the Mets. Took the Mets to a hundred wins this year. There's the Boz. Shane Boz, another one for Chad Wright. But Ron Washington, yeah, all of us saying Ron Washington too. Is Ron Washington? Probably deserves another chance. He's pretty well respected as a coach. Yeah, Sosha is actually, it's actually pretty young. Ooh, look at this. Short print, lava flow, all rise, Aaron Judge. That's a case hit. Not Maybe not a case hit, but a short print anyway. Although we did see one in the last case, same one. Mark with the Yankees. How's the Catholic community in Kansas City? I'm pretty sure Mike Sosha is a big Catholic. Cooper Criswell to 199 for the Halos. Gilo needs the Mike McDaniel of baseball. I mean, so many times baseball is actually, nowadays, you gotta have a nice blend of, of, a, of a good player manager, but someone also willing to embrace, you know, stats. You know, advanced metrics. There's Connor Wong, 47 out of 50. Blue Wave autograph for Boston. That's gonna be for Zachary. Sometimes you kind of have to have that blend.
47 out of 50. Well, Yachty is supposed to probably is going to be a manager, right? At someday, everyone kind of expects him to do that. But I'll bet, like, I don't know. I'll bet the Cardinals organization will give him a minor league manager job or something like that, or a bench coach job. He'll kind of marinate there before he uh, moves on to a to managing the a big club. The big club. Brian Reynolds, Tiger Stripe for the Pirates. That's for David. Right, he's managing the classic already, yeah. So I think the interest for him managing is there, but I bet it's got to be in the Cardinals organization. They're not going to let him out of that organization. It's Greg Diekman to 125. That was one of the, uh, and, and it was different ownership, but that's one of the biggest sort of regrets I think maybe the Dodgers owners might have, or the previous owners might have, is not hiring Mike Sosha, longtime Dodger. Matt Chapman. I think uh, I think catchers tend to profile well for a uh, would profile well as future managers, right? I don't know what the sample size is. Um, let's play a little little game here. Who's your team? Tell me what your team is. And tell me the player on the team most likely to be a manager. I think for the Dodgers, a lot of people. I mean, I have no, I have no really, no information on this because I haven't seen him do this, but or seen him in practice or or whatever. But um, Justin Turner. For the Dodgers, I think a lot, a lot of teammates and a lot of media reports seem to suggest that he's he's probably best suited to be a future uh, a future manager someday. Derek's team: Angels, Kurt Suzuki, another catcher. I can see Justin Turner being being a manager. Because there's some guys who are just like, you know, they, they just play the game. They love the game. They play the game, but they don't need to, they don't need to, uh, they don't necessarily need to stay in the game. But there are guys that are just like, they, they, they miss the, they miss the camaraderie. They, they miss just being a part of the game. And for some players, they miss teaching, just talking about the game. Here's a redemption. Salvador Perez, there's another another catcher that could do it. Patrick Cox with Seattle, Wander Franco. And a lot of times it's not necessarily the best player on the team. You know. And there's another catcher, Wilson Contreras. Could go on to be a coach or manager. There's Alex Degatti, 97 out of 99. ADG, rookie auto for Houston. Chad, one of his last bought mojo teams. Gilo thinks Brad Pitt could be a good manager someday. That's Gilo's team. T.J. Abrams, Lime Green to 125 for Patrick and the Padres. Oscar Hernandez to 100 for the Blue Jays.
<laughs> that that's true. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's not a good look to have Brad Pitt as manager. Josiah Gray to twenty-five. Mark with the Nats. And Mike Bowman, rookie auto for Baltimore. That's going to be for Chad and the O's. Brian Richards is an O's guy. Maybe Brian Roberts. Good one. For, could be a future manager. Yeah, maybe guys that lead by example. Is it, do they make good managers? Maybe that makes a favorite player, for Gilo anyway, like a guy like Alex Gordon, but maybe not a manager. All right. The redemption is Seiya Suzuki, debut signatures. Eddie H. with the Cubs. It's almost, well, we've only done five cases, but I feel like there's been a Seiya Suzuki, almost one per case. Chicago Cubs. Hey, uh... Lucas, what is the what's the latest with Artie Moreno and uh, and the Angels? Is that team gonna be sold? My colleague Nick Jaspi, his dad, the boss man, Mike Jaspi, Hall of Famer, um, is uh, they're Angels fans, and the boss man is can't wait for Artie to sell that team. I think once this, once he couldn't buy that land around the stadium, and once some like weird shady stuff went down with the Anaheim city, city of Anaheim, like I think maybe the writing was, maybe the writing was on the wall, and maybe he had to do that and some poor decision making as well. I think he was great to take Disney from that, or take take from the Disney. Era, I think it was Disney beforehand, right? I think him buying it from Disney, that was a great step. You know, so he took the Angels away from Disney, made it a family business, took it to the next tier or two. You know, but now maybe the team has kind of outgrown him. And maybe he needs to, to give that team up to take it a couple tiers up. Wow. Not sure, but when he announced it, he said he's, quote, considering it, but his actual press release was essentially a goodbye. And I think we have a new owner before next season. Do you think it'll be that fast? What do you think the Angels go for? I mean, baseball teams are getting, sports teams are getting expensive these days. I mean, what did what did like the Timberwolves sell for? What did you know? Look, I think the Timberwolves sold for a couple billion. Clippers sold for a couple billion. There's Juan Soto to sixty. This is true, Diego. With with the with the inflation and with with the economy these days, yeah, things are getting expensive. Or or if it's securities, it's getting less expensive, and that's putting the squeeze on people's uh, wallets and retirements and whatnot. I mean, things always turn around. So Ryan Feltner, you just have to grind it out. You have to ride out the, the lows to get to the highs. Buy low, sell high. Yeah, I think I, that's what I heard too. Some, some, uh, some independent group Put some numbers together and expecting the Suns to go to close to four billion dollars. So, with, I mean, with the, uh, I mean, so you got to think that there's Peyton Henry, 20, 73 out of 75, not 23 out of 25, 73 out of 75. Red Wave autograph for the Marlins, Steve Carney. But the Suns are expected to go for four billion.
I could see the Angels going for two and a half, three. I mean, the, the market is great. Big suburban market on a big piece of land that can be developed. Because I bet you'd be buying buying this. I think Artie Moreno owns this stadium too, right? There's Seiya Suzuki, live. Debut signatures, rookie auto for the Cubs, Eddie H. So the statement says, Marino called owning the Angels a great honor and privilege, adding that it was a difficult decision to read to conclude. That does sound like a goodbye. Yeah, Halos for three and a half. I feel like basketball gets a little edge just because of the international scope of the, of the NBA, just basketball in general, although baseball is pretty international too. But it's a great location. Just millions of people, families especially, around there. You know, plenty of room to renovate or rebuild a, a brand new stadium. You can get free agents down there to play with Mike Trout and Shohei Otani, right, and live in L.A. There's Madison Bumgarner. And the vibe, I don't know, Lucas, you're biased because you're an Angels fan. I'm a Dodgers fan. But the Angels don't seem like, I'm trying to put this the right way. There's Jackson Kowar, blue autograph, color match for the Royals. Um, Ariana Daniel. Angels don't seem like the Clippers, right? They're not the Clippers of, of the baseball market. I think mainly because I guess I just feel like they're all, they've always been the Anaheim Angels. So I don't think they've ever really competed for the L.A. baseball market. They're just in a different city than me. You know? I think that the new owner should, should go back to Anaheim. Should rebrand it. I don't know of anyone who lives in Orange County, who grew up in Orange County, you know, who want to be, who wants to be associated with LA. So I would love for them to lean back into maybe like the, maybe the the OC Angel or something like that. Yeah, there's little hold on the LA market. I, I mean, I'm not sure really what the point is. Anyone in Southern California knows that that Los Angeles and, and Anaheim or Orange County may may be a whole world apart. But I would just pull it back and bring it back to Anaheim, or call it Anaheim Angels, or even call it the Orange County Angels, OC Angels. That sounds kind of cool. For, for basketball, Diego saying what they're expecting for the Suns in order to put in money to the team because they know Phoenix would be a great destination for free agents. Yeah, especially during the winter. Right. Basketball is a, fall, is a winter sport. Keep this breaking rolling. Tyler Glass now rolling. To Chad Wright and the Rays. Yeah, winning cures all, right? Chaz McCormick, Blue Mojo to 199 for Houston. That'll be for Chad with Chaz. And we got an auto auto? Yes, an auto auto for Toronto. That's going to be for Patrick and the Blue Jays. 
34 out of 75. Bobby Witt Jr. debut signatures autograph. That goes to Ariano Daniel with the Kansas City Royals. He's got a nice, I mean, I feel like he's a redemption a lot of times. Sign your cards, Bobby. You got a cool auto. Is that a baseball? That kind of looks like Jerome Bettis' autograph where he draws a football at the end of it. That's just W, that's just the TT, right? But of wit. Nice. And a red Julio Rodriguez. Nice. That's what we want to see. We want to see these parallels for these uh, for these top tier rookies. That is uh, Patrick with the M's. Upside down Bobby Wood Jr. And Curtis Terry. This is Twins Curtis Terry. He's on the Twins? Isn't he a Ranger? This goes to Chad and the Twins. 93 out of 99. Was he traded? Well, uh, on November 5th, 2021, Terry was outrighted off the Texas Rangers uh, roster and became a free agent. Um, at the end of that month, November 2021, he signed a minor league contract with the Twins, and then he was released recently, August 10th, 2022. It's Paul Goldschmidt to 149. Um, now that we're uh, we're halfway through this break, ladies and gentlemen, got another thirty minutes to go. We are all done. We're all done with the baseball season. So, what about some uh, what about some end of year? What about some end of year awards? Oh man, the rally monkey was classic. August 10th is Gilo's birthday. Well, that's when Curtis Terry was released. So, not a happy day for him. Happy day for you, Gilo. Happy, happy days for you. Not a happy day for Curtis Terry. Well, AL MVP, who thinks it's not going to be Aaron Judge? I mean, Vegas has, has him at huge as a huge favorite, minus 30,000. Otani's 35 to 1, plus 3,500. Auto is Connor Brogdon debut signatures for the Phillies. Chad. This is Cutter Crawford. Red Sox, Zachary. 
Gilo wants Otani to win it, but he thinks that Judge has got it. Gilo, you've got you've got uh, you've got some gambling just across the other side of the border. You can put ten bucks on Otani. You can win thirty five dollars thirty five dollars back three hundred and fifty dollars back. Manuel Rodriguez to one ninety nine. Unless you want to lay thirty thousand dollars to win a hundred dollars at Judge minus thirty thousand. Juan Soto Red Wave sixty four out of ninety nine. Yeah, Lucas says it should be Otani. Gila wants Otani to win, but he thinks Judge has it. We did, uh, I think the other night, we did add, oh, let's grab that off. Oh, I don't know if that's a variation that was turned around, Stephen Kwan for Cleveland. Um, we did add up Otani's wins above replacement as a hitter, plus his wins above replacement as a pitcher, and it's like 10.4, 10.7 or something like that. Aaron Judge is still over 11. So for whatever that's worth, if you just want to inelegantly slam those numbers together. There's Colton Welker, Colorado, Eddie. There's uh, Dylan Coleman, rookie autographs for the Royals. Ariano with the Royals. Gilo put put ten bucks on Missouri to be number one Georgia, and they almost did it. Plus twenty three hundred. That would have been a nice payout. Might just be West Coast bias, Lucas. I think a lot of those East Coast baseball writers are staying up watching West Coast Angels games. Or Dodgers, or Giants, or Mariners games? Probably not. I'd probably argue more baseball writers on the East Coast than the West Coast, right? I think that that bias might not be as bad anymore just with with streaming and the ease of being able to replay games and and stuff like that off of various streaming services and how easy it is to do stuff like that these days but I mean nothing beats just watching a game live and there's not a lot of East Coast writers are doing that then Get a bit of a bias, or you just have to go go nuts like Mike Trout, and, you know, and then uh, just to get people's attentions. Uh, NL MVP Goldschmidt's still the favorite according to Vegas. It's not as huge as Aaron Judge, but he's minus five thousand. You got a minus five thousand out of your account just to win a hundred bucks. But the the implication is that there's a, it's a little more uh, that it's a little uh, it's more of a, a lock. Mickey is wondering if we did immaculate yet. Yeah, no, we did not. There's Nate Uvalde, 199. Mickey, if you uh, Nightbot, you see in the chat, will often drop a schedule, and that'll take you to a, a Google Sheet, a Google document, a Google Excel sheet that'll tell you our schedule. It'll tell you what we've done, what we're doing, and what we're gonna do. I also have some other important information there as well, including like shipping information and all that. That way, let's say I'm, I'm away from the, the camera for a second, that way you can always look that up and not be in the dark and you'll always be you'll always be in the know.
very useful resource for everybody, whether you've been here for, been with Jaspies for a year, or whether you've been with Jaspies for a minute. Chris Sale, Boston, Zachary. And a redemption, Edward Cabrera. I'm surprised I get that question, Diego. Where do I buy? I think the website's in the stream title. I think the website's in the description of the video. I think the website is right here, jazbeescasebreaks.com. I might just have it tattooed right across my thumb right over there. Got a Bobby Witt Jr. base card right off the top. Debut signature, Seth Romero. Mark with the Nats. <laughs> yeah, the website might be right on my gravestone, along with a train whistle. I, I don't think I'm going to be buried in a grave, though. I feel like, uh, obviously, the burial ritual is very important for, for societies. There's our one per case, Greg Diekman, that goes to Eddie H. and the, the uh, Cubs. But I think I should be buried, like, on a train, right? A train that perpetually goes around the world so that everyone may may have a chance to uh, you know honor me but not like a post-apocalyptic train in the like in the movie Snowpiercer not like that a happy celebration train this is, Ivan Castillo, or Ivan Castillo, 23 out of 75. All right, another box. Get a QR code tattooed on my hand that goes so I can just be like, if it's like right here, I can just be like, just go there. You know what, next time we get new new mats, maybe we should just have just big QR codes all over the place. And I can just be like, everyone's like, where's the website? I'd be like, right there. And I was like, hey, just put point your, open up your camera and point it to right there. If Panini pays me, I'll put Panini points tattooed on my, uh, or temporary tattooed on my on my hand. I just have to change it every once in a while. I mean, I should sell ad space right here. I mean, this is probably the most seen part of my body. I mean, aside from my face, but no one's really looking at my face while this is breaking, right? They're looking at my hands. They're looking at me holding this card. The most valuable bit of ad space right there.
Jake Brent to 125. Hmm. If Panini wanted to put a QR code on my thumb, how much would that cost? I wouldn't want it to be permanent, but I wouldn't mind if it was like a, if there is, if there's, is there tattoo technology? Here's another Edward Cabrera for Miami. There's like a tattoo that can last for like six months, maybe? Miami, that'll be for Steven. I don't know, we'd have to negotiate, Gilo. I don't want to say any numbers right now in case Panini's listening. So, they'd have to make me an offer. And we'll, and we'll talk. ABC, Gilo, always be closing. A ABN, always be negotiating. ABL, always be leveraging. Alexander Wells to 199. And a Josh Low. How low can you go? Goes to Chad Wright and the Rays. There's a clothing shop that you really like. Made some off hand, I get a logo tattooed on you. And they said they give you 10% off the store for the rest of your life. So when did you get that tattoo? Got Otto Lopez, snakeskin, 11 out of 50. Oh, you didn't get it, all right. It's a missed savings for you. Have you continued to shop at this store? And we got a Jack Lopez, snakeskin, Boston. It'll be for Zach. 28 out of 35. And a, like I said, the one per case Greg Demon, sometimes two per case Greg Demon. Eddie H with the Cubs. Final three boxes coming up. And you could have been getting those 10% offs. What sales tax out there? It's probably sales tax and then some, right? Yeah, Lucas, Gilo's not closing. Put that coffee down, Gilo. Coffee's for closers. Now that we're getting closer to the holiday season, which is kind of crazy to say, but now that we're getting closer to the holiday season, uh, to, uh, to Christmas, um, there is a uh, great SNL sketch with Alec Baldwin, who did that famous Glengarry Glen Ross monologue. Um, there's a great SNL sketch where he does that, but he's an elf in the North Pole. It's pretty good. Wander Franco, put that cocoa down. <laughs> What's GNAC? Glenn Gary Glenn Ross, one of my favorites. Eli White. 
we were talking the other day about uh, about like familiar movies that you always watch that you can that you've watched so much that they can become like movies you fall asleep to. Eli White goes to Patrick and the Texans. That's another one. Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, and um, that's uh, it's one of my favorite. A little dialogue heavy, a lot of rain. Oh, Gilo not always closing. I got it. Jonah Heim. Jonah Heim for the Rangers. That's going to be for Patrick Davis. So they wanted a tattoo in a visible spot and a decent, what's a decent size? What was their idea of a decent size? And where were the, where's a decent location? I mean, not on your face. Can't put it on your face, would you, Macklemore? Clayton Kershaw, 50 out of 100. Also, what's the name of the... I don't want to give this shop free publicity, but now I'm curious. What's the name of this shop? Like, if, like I wonder if my mind would be different if, if, it, if they had a cool name. There's AJ Alexi for Texas. Another one for Patrick. Your arm may be half the size of a card. It's a decent size. Like two by three, it's a decent size. This is like, these are like three by, these are almost like index card sizes. Credit card size, half a credit card. Seven out of 50, Jacob DeGrom. The Bunker. All right, that's kind of a cool name. Cool enough to put a tattoo on you? Maybe not. The DeGrom goes to Chad in the Mets. Joe Ryan, Minnesota Twins. That will be for Chad. 49 out of 75. And a couple torques there. A silver torque for Patrick in Detroit. If their name was like, uh, I don't know, Killer Bees Motorcycle Club or something like that. I mean, that'd be kind of a cool tattoo to have. Yeah, at a glance, that Joe Ryan could have been Dustin May, right? With that, with that hair right there. Be a little bit brighter though. Dust, Dustin May's, Dustin May's locks, his lettuce. If you're a baseball player, what kind of hairstyle are you rocking? Are you are you growing out the hair so that lettuce, like, flows out of the back of your helmet? You know, maybe when you when you turn first. That helmet flies off and that, and that lettuce is just flying behind you. Do you go with that? Are you going chains, no chains? Or two chains? Diego's going Bryce Harper hair and beard. Chilo's growing out your hair if you're a pitcher to hide the sticky stuff. I was actually going to say if I was a pitcher, I'd maybe grow out the hair. As a hitter, maybe I wouldn't grow out the hair. Definitely chains. Def going chains. 
I feel like I don't know. I feel like I can't pull off a chain, but I feel like I, if I'm a if I'm a pitcher or a hitter, if I'm a baseball player, I feel like I could pull off pull off a couple chains. Probably layer them a little bit too, you know. Maybe get like a maybe get like a shorter 12 inch chain. 14 inch chain, a 16 inch chain. Get a few chains, maybe a, I don't know, maybe some uh, some contrast and colors on the chains. I don't want a pendant though, not, not, nothing heavy on the chains. It's Brian Dela Cruz to 149. But the chains I definitely want kind of bobbing up and down as I'm rounding third, you know what I mean? Running to home. Diving head first, you want to see those chains flying, flying behind me? Here's a cool Whit Merrifield. Pro penmanship autograph for the Royals, Ariano. I, I might rock a mohawk, I'd be tempted to rock a mohawk, Rex. Oh yeah, John Boy had a video of a pitcher on the Guardians. Who kept with this. Could be the sticky stuff in there. My potential closer entrance song. We've talked about this before. Um, it would be um, it would be "All Right" by Kendrick Lamar. Just letting the stadium know that we gonna be all right. You know, we'll be fine. I'm here. I'm here to close out the game. We're gonna be all right. There's Luis Frias to 99. That'll be for the Diamondbacks, Oliver. And we got Dylan Carlson, debut signatures for Carlson for the Cardinals, Zachary. And then since I'd be the closer for the Dodgers, Diego, hopefully uh, I'll be maybe closing in like playoff games or something like that. And then like Kendrick Lamar would actually come out and do the do the actual song as my walk up or as my closer entrance, and that'd really get the people going. There's Anolia Paredes debut signatures for Chad and the Astros. Another Bobby Witt Jr. Zach Short. We learned Zach Short is about 5'10. Not that short. Not super tall. Not super short. Uh, Zach Short and this Torkelson card goes to Patrick. Rex would use BC Boy Sabotage. Has no one used BC Boy Sabotage before? Or Marilyn Manson's Beautiful People? I've, I've, heard, I've heard hitters use that as uh, walk-up music. Not as closer music. Yeah, I did see that. That, that. That's what made me think of it. Edwin Diaz did get the, the trumpet guy song to do the trumpets for that song, right? The guy who did the song? Wait, was it just a run-of-the-mill trumpet guy, or was it the actual guy that did the song? Gilo. I thought it was the guy that did the song. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe I'm wrong on that. I don't know, but sometimes, I don't know, sometimes I run hot. You know what I mean? Like, I'm here. When I get fired up, I'm like right there. So maybe I need a song that chills me out, but still fires me up. That might be uh, that might be Phil Collins in the air tonight. That's a slow burning song that kind of gets you fired up. You know, by the time those drums kick in. 
So while I'm warming up, it'll be, I can feel it coming in the air tonight. I'd have to time it so that that maybe my last warm up pitch would be like, doo -doo 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 boom, 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 boom. You know? That would fire me up. That fires me up. Oh, yeah. If you're the Dodgers closer, you get coming to some uh, Vincente, Vincente Fernandez. R.I.P. Only if you're in L.A., though. Um, who uh, used Volver, Volver? It was uh, Verdugo. Alex Verdugo used that as his uh, walk-up song. And uh, I'll tell you what, Diego. And I've been to a number of games when Verdugo is still on the Dodgers. You go on a nice toasty day game. And you hear the sounds of uh, Vincente Fernandez in the stadium on a toasty LA afternoon in Chavez Ravine. Just feels right. Reed Detmers, Blue Mojo to 199. Yeah, I think it was either a night where the wives got to pick walk-up songs or it was like their kids or something like that. And um, and yeah, Craig Kimbrell did change the walk-up song to Let It Go. From the hit soundtrack, Frozen. From the movie Frozen, the hit animated picture. The wickedly talented, the wonderfully gifted Adele Kazim. It works on night games too, Diego, but not as well. I feel like it's. I feel like that's like, like that's daytime music. To 50. Max Cranic, not not low Cranic, not medium Cranic, but let's we want Max Cranic. Three out of twenty-five. We, we want Max Chronic, sir. Let's get some Max Chronic. I feel like this is like we need full power. We need Max Chronic. If Chronic was a unit of, of of energy, think about it that way. If it was a unit of energy, we need Max Chronic, sir. Kyle Muller, rookie autographs for the Braves. Brandon Richards, Bravos. Diego, I think uh, I think Alex Verdugo still has the same walk-up song in Boston. I don't, know, I don't know if it plays as well. To some, I'm sure. Not to all. <laughs> There's Nicky Lopez to 149. At least during the home games. Kansas City, Julio Rodriguez, Seattle. That'll be for Patrick. And there's Brian De La Cruz for the fish. That's going to be for Steven. Gilo, you want the Mortal Kombat theme song? I, I just feel like that just gets you too, too there. That probably gets you like three or four extra miles on your fastball, but like it's like, like it's flying all over the place. No, you don't have control. That's just too much. That's just too much. It's like it's like maybe having like Darude's Sandstorm playing, which is usually a home run, home run song. There you go. That's it. See, that's weird things happen when you do a long break like this. But 
We had some fun breaks or a fun hits pop. Here's a quick little uh, recap here, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for watching. Thanks for breaking with us. We have another full case. Nice, Bobby Wood Jr. We have a full case. Another full case of Prism Baseball loaded up in the store right now on jazbeescasebreaks.com. Lava Flow, Aaron Judge. So a lot of fun stuff. Cal Raleigh, some Carolina Blue autographs, some Tiger Stripes. Tiger. So a lot of fun stuff. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Thanks for watching and keeping me company in the chat. And I'll see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.